Imagine dedicating hundreds of hours to meticulously hand scraping and bluing a lathe. Each pass guided by precise measurements, each pass bringing the machine closer to perfection. After investing so much time and skill, it would be unfortunate to let the abrasive dust lurking under the waves compromise the integrity of all that hard work. I scoured YouTube for way cover ideas, but nothing seems to meet my requirements. So today I decided to build my own version of a way cover. Before we start, we need to define the must-haves of this way cover. It's crucial to keep it as low profile as possible. The standard 160mm chuck provides sufficient space, but the 200mm independent chuck requires an ultra-thin cover to avoid interfering with the extended chuck jaws. Also, I want to minimize the travel loss in the Z- direction. I aim for a durable, easy to clean, cost effective material that is readily available. I chose a glass fiber reinforced Teflon sheet used in packaging machines. A sheet of one square meter costs around 40 euros and it can yield three way covers with two spare sheets. With a thickness of just 0.3 millimeters, this material is heat resistant, making it impervious to hot chips and grinding sparks. This would be the perfect material for a roll type way cover for my machine. I aim for a seamless fit between the way cover housing and the lathe bed. To achieve this, I must accurately measure the profile of the inverted V ways, enabling me to replicate it in fusion. While some measurements are straightforward and easily accomplished with a caliper, determining the V profile presents some challenges. We have certain known parameters like the angle between the planes, but accurately measuring the height difference between the flat side of each guideway and the top of the V-ways goes beyond the capabilities of a caliper. I often find myself scrolling through websites like Cracklist in search of accessories for my workshop. Fortunately, this old new set of gauge blocks found its way from an old communist factory into my small home shop. When I purchased this digital indicator, I anticipated its usefulness, but I've come to prefer the analog counterpart for tasks like checking part runout and alignment. However, now it's time for the digital indicator to shine, particularly in measuring the difference between the two planes without the need for manual turn counting. This dial indicator lacks a manual lever for retraction, a reliable method for measuring height differences involves combining gauge blocks with the digital dial indicator. These gleaming metal blocks boast exceptional precision in their dimensions. By combining multiple blocks, you can create a reference block of any desired size. In this instance, I'll use them to measure the height difference between a known gauge block and the V-way height. Usually, I try to confine my CAD dimensions to whatever stock size I have at hand. In this case, this piece of aluminum can fit the housing of the way cover, so let's cut a piece of it. With this piece cut to size, let's explore the design thinking. Given my limited time, I typically work in Fusion approximately twice a month. I'm far from being an expert capable in teaching CAD, so I won't be covering CAD design process in this video. Instead, let's dive into how I envision this part appearance. The housing is crafted to perfectly align the profile with the V-ways. Notice that the front opening, which permits the Teflon sheet to pass through, sits near to the top of the V-ways. Consequently, this way cover has the minimum height of just a few millimeters. When constructing a way roll cover, it's important to account for the need of a clean sheet before retracting it. So, to address this, the pocket located above the slot is designed to house a wiper. This wiper will effectively clear the chips and abrasive dust from the way cover before it retracts. But how does the sheet get retracted? Well, there are two approaches here. One is quite simple but not entirely foolproof. 
while the other one is more sophisticated but requires additional machine parts. Since I'm currently in the testing phase and unsure of the long-term performance of this way cover, I opted for the KISS solution. Keep it simple, stupid. The KISS solution involves using a tape torsion spring that I found in my shop. Think of it as a wider measuring tape with a teflon sheet instead of a steel tape. The more sophisticated approach would eliminate the need for a spring to retract the teflon sheet. Instead, it would employ a mechanism that converts the linear motion of the cross slide into rotary motion, which can then be used to roll back the teflon sheet. This rudimentary smaller scale mechanism can help you visualize what I'm talking. The right pulley comes toward the tail stop. And here would come what I just shown in Fusion. That white plastic moving back and forth represents the apron of the lathe moving back and forth. And that white string would be a steel wire that would be passing right below the ball screw. With this setup, the pulling force would remain consistent across the entire length of the bed. It's especially beneficial for late with longer beds, where the torsion spring solution could exacerbate the problem of uneven pulling force. However, since the elegant solution is an enhancement to an existing design, let's proceed with constructing the simpler version first. With the design complete, I will now move to the manufacturer tab to specify the machining operations required for the milling machines to produce our component. A CNC milling machine is more like a genie that says, your wish is my command. Except that you need to express your wishes very precisely. And this genie speaks G-code. So by post-processing, I can convert the toolpads I see here into genie's language. Prior to commencing any machining, the Linux CNC controller must establish the parts position on the machine table. Fortunately, this touch probe can feed into Linux CNC precise coordinates for all the three dimensions, automating the process to a simple press of a button. I begin machining by rough cutting the pockets for the V-Ways. This will allow me to finish the V-Profile through interpolation using a 3mm end mill. On a manual machine, this operation would involve tilting either the workpiece or the machine head. Fortunately, with this CNC machine, the process is considerably more straightforward. A 12mm end mill will take care of the bulk material removal from the inside pocket. When milling deep pockets like this, one of the challenges is cheap evacuation. Having a mill without an enclosure does not allow me to use flood coolant, so in order to prevent cheap free cutting, I resort to the next best thing, mist coolant. A quick clean up on the top and we're almost finished with the machining process. I say almost in terms of machining footage, as I got so engrossed in the process that I forgot to hit the record button while machining the back cap. Look at this beauty. Let's do a quick test fit. Yep, I like it. For a more like factory made aspect, I wanted to anodize the aluminum housing. So now I can put them all together. Sometimes the real life beats CAD. Some aspects are harder to predict. I had to make more room for the spring so that it can behave as it needs. The back cap has been milled to include pockets designed to accommodate the surrounding components. I have some screw heads, some oil level view and the corner of a sheet metal protruding to the headstock surface. But the way cover back cap successfully accommodates those so that when the way cover house it is in place, everything is seamless. It's time to clamp it to the ways of the lathe. See that blue over there? That is from when I was scraping and gluing the closing plate. Other than in this moment, I am glad that the factory has added that sheet cover for the ball screw. I could not make such a discrimination to protect only one axis. The x-axis needs some love too. We have two issues to address here. 
The bottom surface is about 1 mm wider than the top slide. If these two would be in line, there would be no blue line when I move this slide forward. But as you can see, there is. This groove in the back was very helpful when I had to do the dovetail scraping. But now, it became a potential source of wear. These two places can become a collection point for chips and abrasive particles. These contaminants can migrate beneath the x-axis slide, embedding themselves into the softer turkide material. So when you have friends that can cut and bend sheet metal, the extent of the imagination can go a bit further. So I've built this piece of sheet metal that can cover the exposed portion of the x-axis. As a part of the rebuild, all the wipers, including this one, were replaced. This wiper is doing a good job. But I think combining these two will keep the x-axis protected from the elements. This should also give a longer life to the wiper. Is this how something like factory made should look like? Hmm, not yet. Patience. See this gap here? Let's make it disappear. Don't worry, little Viler. I got you covered. There is one last thing we need to do. Add the final protection element for the x-axis. This is the same type of wiper that I presented earlier. With the edge of the top cover shortened, the wiper can perfectly fit underneath. This lip seal will push against the sheet metal blocking any dust from entering the x-axis guideways. With the edge of the sheet metal a bit rounded, look how nice the wiper is sealing. The nice part of running Linux CNC is that I can step back for a bit and do this celebration dance just from the keyboard arrows. Minimum travel loss? Checked. Enough clearance for the 4-jaw independent chuck? Checked. Optimal dust protection for the x-axis slide? Checked. Now we can truly call this project like factory made. Due to my limited time, the video you just watched was made after a few months after actually building the way cover. Therefore, in a project you'll see in a future video, I had the chance to put this to the test. I'll let you enjoy a bit the making of the chips. Look what a mess we've made. It's time to clean it up. Hope you enjoyed this project, see you next time.